Well, halftime at Dayton's Welcome Stadium and Winton Woods with a seven point lead on Thurgood Marshall. Second half action comes your way on Fox Sports Iowa in just a bit. We'll recap the first half, but first, joined in the booth by my partner Jeff Picoro and Dave Burke, recruiting analyst from Fox Sports Next. No one likes to talk recruiting more than I do, Dave, and we have some time here tonight and a great game to talk about with a lot of talent on the field between these two teams. Let's start with Wenton Woods and their top playmaker, Mike Edwards, who's on his way to UK. Yeah, University of Kentucky commit, playing defensive back for him, the future. A uh, very athletic guy. Has a lot of talent, and uh, Mark Stoops is going to like having him on that roster in the future. And in the first half, I mean, he's a defensive back, but he got the ball and helped the Warriors offense out as well. Yeah, he, he's able to play both ways in high school, but uh, his future will be on defense, and he's going to be a guy that's going to come up and hit you. You know, the thing I like about him, he's a sure tackler. When he yes. gets his hands on you, you go down to the ground, and that's what Mark Stoops is looking for. He's trying to get more athletic in that defensive secondary. Guys like this is what they need. Yeah, they, they really do. When you play in that SEC, he brings a combination of physical size, speed, and toughness, and that's what they're going to have to have going forward. Dave, we called Daniel Cage's name a lot in the first half. Right. Big number 75 for the Warriors. Tell me about him. Daniel Cage is a young man who uh, the recruiting process, he really not rushed it. You know, you're talking about a guy who has great physical size, good get off right at the point of attack, and he's able to split the offensive lineman. He's got Louisville, he's got Miss, uh, Michigan State right now, two schools, but Ohio State came and watched him play last Friday. So there's always a possibility the Buckeyes come in late on him. Wow, and that, that's you. I mean, this kid could probably have his pick of the litter of where he wants to go, right? Yeah, I mean, because he's also got offers from Florida, uh, Georgia Tech, places like that. So Nebraska looked at him and they want him. So, but I think he's going to stay closer to home. Uh, and I think right now it's Michigan State or Louisville that will be battling it out in the end. Well, Andre Parker says he has about a dozen guys on this team that will get college looks without running through the entire list. Another big name is George Brown, another big body. George Brown Jr., Jr., uh, you know, uh, is a fact. He's got a great frame. He's still learning to play football. Yeah. He's got to get more explosive from the hips. Uh, he's got to work on his technique. But uh, a lot of colleges this past summer saw what he can do in their camps. And he's got somewhere around 30 offers or more. You know, there's one other junior that I really like on that team, too, and that's Noah Listerman. Got great size, just a junior. He's a mauler, isn't he? Yeah, you're talking about a guy who, true 6'7, 260, 270 pounds, who, as you know, pick will get bigger when he gets that college right. level. And he moves extremely well, and he has the explosion in the hips already. So he will maul you, and I expect big things. Just got offered by the University of Cincinnati this past week. When you talk about Thurgood Marshall, the playmaker in the first half, and the playmaker the last two years really has been Vayante Copeland. And he's headed to Michigan State. But what type of player is Mark D'Antonio getting? Mark D'Antonio is getting a player that can play both sides of the football as you're seeing the night. He's going to play defense going forward, but I have a feeling that Michigan State staff is really going to fight over him once he gets up there and they see what he can do. In fact, one of their coaches is here watching the night, and uh, it'd be interesting, you know, to see what they're thinking right now after seeing what he's done the night with the uh, kickoff return to open up the game and. Tay Tay, as they call him, is a great player, uh, great kid off the field, and he's got a lot of talent. Very fluid, isn't he? Very fluid, very smooth. And uh, maybe not seen it tonight because they don't throw the ball as much as far as Witten Woods, but he's very smooth in the back pedal, which you've got to have at that next level. He's got good length at 6'1, uh, 185 pounds, and again, like you said, very versatile. What about Landon Brazil? <laughs> and it, I think people say the name, and I think it's a name that's getting more and more play quickly. Landon Brazil committed to the University of Cincinnati, having never played high school football until Unbelievable. this fall. Unbelievable. Uh, very athletic basketball player who realizes that football can be his future. And uh, it's going to be hard for Cincinnati to stay on this young man because a lot of other schools like Arkansas and Indiana, Michigan State are taking interest in him as they see him with pads on. But I tell you what, just watching him, he's got a long ways to go. And I, I don't mean that bad. I mean, he's got to learn the intricacies of football, pad level, staying low, yep. uh, staying in that basketball stance, especially where he's playing at defensive end. And he's got to get bigger. Obviously, he's slight because he's always played basketball. Once he puts some weight on, he could be a player. Yeah, and, and the thing is, what I like was I saw him in week one, and he carries the pads well mm -hmm. for a guy who's never really worn them before. And as you said, we know what can happen at the next level. He's going to go in, work for a whole year, red shirt. Mm -hmm. By year two, year three, watch out because you're going to have a kid that can really play either tight end or defensive end. A guy who's got a frame like that has a huge upside in the college 
football world. Who else for the Cougars do you like, and what have you seen here tonight? D'Angelo Martin, uh, number seven for him, is playing safety. He's another guy who's got a great frame, who probably grows into an outside backer, maybe even a defensive end, because he's about six foot four. So I like him a lot, uh, but we got to make sure he gets the academic part of it done. And uh, from everything we're being told, he's going to qualify. I think he's going to those guys and surprise some people late in the process. As you go to games in the fall, how often do you get a matchup like this where the field is just littered with college football talent the way it is? In southwest Ohio, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can go to see the Huber Heights, Waynes, the Centervilles, go down the GCL and see the Elders and the St. X and Coleraines even outside the, in the GMC. So a lot of talent in southwest Ohio it keeps me very busy. I know that there's a couple of other players that are out there and that you're, we've been talking about that are uncommitted still, right? Uncommitted. T. Gray Scales out of Coleraine High School, uh, linebacker looking at Indiana, Oklahoma, and Wisconsin. Uh, right now, I think the Hoosiers may have the advantage. John Besney is a great story, has a lot of offers. I think he's down to Vanderbilt, but I think right now Yale and Harvard may win out. This is a young man who's got a 34 <laughs> on his ACT and a very great student um, and a guy who's going to play offensive line going forward. And then... Arius Moore, linebacker out Beaver Creek, uh, looking at Marshall and looking at Louisville and UC, Illinois, also um, Indiana. And uh, I think the Hoosiers, again, may have a strong case with him. We're early in the season still, relatively, but is this a good year for Southwest Ohio and the amount of talent that will funnel to the college level? It's a good year, but not a great year. Okay. Uh, so I, I, right now I'll say there's a lot of talent, uh, especially when we start talking about 215 guys. You start looking at Justin Hilliard out of St. Xavier, who's got the offers from mm -hmm. Michigan, Ohio State, Notre Dame. You start looking at Christopher Young and Chris Fobbs out of Miamisburg, two young guys who a lot of people don't know about. Tyree Canal, who's already committed to Michigan out of Huber Heights, Wayne. Uh, Noah Listerman, as we already talked about in this game. And Jacob Holder out of Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy, mm -hmm. uh, an offensive lineman who's going to get a lot of looks. And he's got a teammate in the 216 class, Prince Michael Sammons. Remember that name. A uh, young man from Lagos, Nigeria. Again, has never played football until this fall. Six foot six, 265 pounds, Ooh. and uh, right now they're they're putting the you know they got the training wheels on, keeping the four point stands. But if you have a chance to go see this young man, in the future he's going to be a national recruit. That's why we have Dave Burke from Fox Sports next to keep us up to date on names like that. A seven point lead at halftime for Winton.